Hi everyone, today we'll be talking about Instagram and feminism. Odds are you've got an Instagram account as 64% of 18 to 29 year olds use the app. The social media has over a billion monthly active users who use the platform as a tool for discourse through videos, photos, comments, hashtags and so on. Our job in today's video will be to show you how feminism is possible on Instagram. To do so, we'll be using a paper titled, Is This What a Feminist Looks Like? Curating the Feminist Self in the Neoliberal Visual Economy of Instagram, which was written by Kat Mahoney, a University of Liverpool academic. As most of you who use Instagram know, the most popular pictures are those of beautiful women with impossible curves in the most gorgeous of places. That's because the site privileges post-feminist ideals of beauty and consumption, that is to say, feminist content which does not threaten the patriarchal, racial and class structures but is also likely to gain traction on Instagram. After what I've just told you about Instagram and its pushing of neoliberal discourses, you might be thinking there's no way that feminism is possible on Instagram. But we're going to show you it does have feminist potential by talking about two influencers who use the platform to engage in the feminist discourse and resist neoliberal post-feminist regimes of beauty and self-regulation. The first person we're going to talk about is Megan Jane Crabb. She's a UK-based body positivity activist and author with 1.3 million followers. She shares her personal experiences of suffering from an eating disorder from her dieting because of how she hated her body. She posts to show her body before and after the eating disorder. She supports that women need to be themselves. Megan rejects neoliberal post-feminist discourses that link moral worth and success for women with the maintenance of a slim, disciplined and controlled body for the appreciation by others. Megan posted an apology to all the fat people I've hurt with my account in 2017, showing that she realises she still might be constrained in neoliberal feminism while there might be, quote, people around me whose bodies were bigger, whose skin were darker, and were differently abled. Our next case study will be a fitness Instagram influencer named Beck Chambers. Beck is an Australian personal trainer and powerlifter with 123k followers on Instagram, offering online training programs, post-workout videos, tips, and candid photos as well as post shots. Like in the previous example, Beck preaches acceptance of our bodies. She directly criticises the fitness industry on Instagram by pointing out their hypocrisy by selling an impossible body ideal through costly nutritional programs but at the same time telling them to accept themselves for who they are. She offers her followers an attempt to resist the understanding and construction of traditional images of female nudity by making fun of what Instagram promotes. These two case studies serve as a good example of how people can use Instagram to build themselves a platform which enables them and their viewers to discuss feminism. They all preach body positivity and acceptance of oneself in a manner which differs from these neoliberal norms we're talking about. They're not going to start a revolution, but they're encouraging of a normalisation of different body types and them opening a platform for discussion is a great start. Moreover, Instagram has benefited the feminist movement in more ways than just creating a ground for discussion. For example, at Women's March is an account initially created for the 2017 Women's March protests, which brought together over 6 million people globally in defence of women's rights. This account does not just educate its 1.4 million followers on feminist issues, but further organises and mobilises on a diverse range of issues, including the creation of new campaigns or protests. Account at Five for Feminism actually raises money for charities supporting women's rights by visualising different topics related to feminism and donating $5 to these charities every time she posts. This demonstrates how Instagram can be utilised to benefit the feminist movement in a number of ways, ranging from the encouragement of feminist discourse, as seen in our two case studies, to actually organising campaigns and raising money. In turn, it must be acknowledged that it is possible for Instagram to have a positive effect on feminism and on women's rights in general. Well, if you've enjoyed this video, don't hesitate to check out more from the University of Liverpool's Media and Communications Department. This theory is just one of many, and if you're interested in social media, news, TV, movies, music, politics, the internet, or so on, you never know. The University of Liverpool might just be the right place for you.